And as before, I, I mean, I'm a little bit uh, behind on my uploads, but I probably I will do it tomorrow uh, because leg, uh, last Thursday lectures are still not uploaded and, my, and Tuesday lectures not uploaded. But as I said before, uh, when I upload the material on the website, I will make a proper references to those computational parts in earlier lectures. So you can see all details if you if you wish to re, re, uh, refresh on those on those parts. So one example we did with you, it was this matrix three five zero negative seven, negative six two times two matrix. For this matrix, we established that this matrix is diagonalizable. It, we did we did this two days ago, and so it it uh, accepts such a representation. You can find such a representation, and a pair of matrices P and G it should be like this D is a diagonal matrix with these entries, negative 6 and 3. And the P matrix is, the one, it is this one, negative 5, 1, 9, 0. This didn't come out of the blue. This is the result of our effort on two days ago and before when we did the spectral analysis of this matrix. So I'm just using that, I'm just using that again here to compute the power of this matrix. Uh, we also computed two days ago that the inverse of P will be this matrix. We did this two days ago. So now we can address the question, what will be the power of my A matrix? What will be the power A to the power K? According to my slide, if just previous slide, I can alternatively compute this power by this formula. All I have to do, I have to take my diagonal D to the power K and multiply by P and P inverse on sides. And that will work for any k. Again, look at this. Rather than k different multiplications, sequential multipl multiplications, we need to do only two matrix multiplications here between p and g, power k and g and p inverse. As, as a matter of fact, this one will be a very easy one because you will multiply a matrix by a diagonal one, and that's the easy, easy one. And by the way, you see the eigenvalues here different from zero. So in fact, this formula works for any integer in integral k, both positive and negative. Because on my previous slide, we just observed with you that when eigenvalues are non-zero, each of them, matrix is invertible. So A matrix is invertible. So let's, try, let's just do that. Let's just multiply these things out. Here it is. AK is my P matrix, negative 5, 1, 9, 0. First factor in this representation. Here's my second factor, matrix D, where diagonal entries properly... Uh, Exp exponentiated. That's how we compute the k power of the diagonal matrix. You see, as simple as this. And here's my p inverse factor. All I have to do, I have to multiply these two. As a matter of fact, this multiplication is very easy because it's another thing we established with you two, day two days ago. When you multiply a matrix of any kind, by a diagonal one, all you have to do, you have to multiply each column by the diagonal entries. That's another thing we established with you two days ago. It's a benefit of multiplying something with a diagonal matrix. So the first, the first one, if I multiply it out, it will be like this. Well, one line I just copied from here. It will be this column with this extra factor and this column with this extra factor. And that's my second second factor just copied. So the only really difficult matrix multiplication is the last one, this one. This one, you, you need to do it in, in full generality. You have to take the dot product of this row and this column, uh, first row, second column, last row, first column, and so on. So here it is. Is the, the only true matrix multiplication in the whole computation. I don't know. I mean, like, a, you, you, I mean, this is really impressive stuff. As a matter of fact, it's a big achievement for the, in, in terms of the computational um, improvements. Rather than doing lots of lots of matrix multiplication, essentially we do only one significant multiplication. Right now we're doing it. The rest was just piece of cake. Look at this. So my first entry will be just this row dot product with this piece. Because we have 0 here, all I have to do to multiply this negative 5, negative 6 power k with this 9. Oh, sorry, the other way. I have to multiply this 3 power k with this 9. Because 9 is a free square, I just add 2 to the power k here. 
uh, second entry here, it will be dot product of this, P of this row and this column, and that is this expression, uh, is this piece with nine, and that's five to three K. Uh, this entry, it's a dot product of the last row and the last column, should be zero, because there's no any overlappings. And the last row and the last column gives me this value. Is the complete universal expression for any power of the matrix A. As a double check, as a double check, I, I always recommend do you a double check. We can, via this formula, compute the inverse of A. All I have to do, I have to put K equal negative 1 across this formula to come up with the formula for the, for the, to come up with the matrix for the inverse. If I do that, that will be 1 on 9. P will be 3. K is negative 1. Here will be uh, 5 on 6. And here will be 5 on 3. Here is 0. And here 9 on 6 or 3 on 2. With extra negative, obviously. Or if you simplify this, that's the formula for the inverse. Why this is a double check? This is a double check because you can compute the inverse directly. We had a formula for the inverse yesterday, or not yesterday, two days ago, remember? All you have to do, you have to compute the determinant, which is negative 18 for this matrix. And then you have to swap the diagonal entries around and put the negatives next to the opposite diagonal. If you do that, that will be exactly this matrix. Which means that we, well, well it's one of the indications that the, our computation here is fine.